Fans for our sports network listeners and Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Welcome to another episode of the Call Sheet Breakdowns. This is your host, Kevin Smith, podcaster at FFSN and the Steel Curtain Network. And pleased to bring you these weekly breakdowns here on our Steelers YouTube channel, our SCN YouTube channel. And this week we get to focus on a victory. That's exciting because we haven't, haven't had that in a little while. And it's an, it's an interesting victory as well because Mason Rudolph led the Steelers to a 34-11 win last Saturday night over the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going to break down his performance and talk about why he was so effective, right? So let's jump right in. If we look at the screen here, the offense against Cincinnati, boy, they really had some big numbers for, for Pittsburgh anyway, 397 yards, which was their second highest total of the year, 34 points. That was their most points in a game since 2021. They were excellent on third down, 7 out of 14, a 50% conversion rate. They averaged almost 7 yards per play, which is a yard and a half higher than their season average. And the aforementioned Mason Rudolph, 17 out of 27 passing, 290 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. It was a heck of a performance for Rudolph, who had not started a football game since that 2021 season. So let's talk about why Rudolph was so effective. What are some of the things that he did well? And, and we're going to focus on three things in this breakdown. One, his coverage reads. Two, his pocket presence. And three, his accuracy. Those are all things where the Steelers have struggled with uh, this year at the quarterback position. And all things Rudolph did extremely well. All right, so if we jump in, it didn't take long, right? This is the second play of the game. Uh, an 86-yard touchdown pass to George Pickens. And we see out of the gate Rudolph's ability to diagnose coverage, read coverage, and know where to go with the football. Because he's going to get cover one from the Bengals, and the Steelers are going to run a simple slant flat concept to that. At the top of the screen, you got a little flat route there from Connor Hayward, who's lined up in the slot, and Pickens is going to run the, the slant inside. And on the backside, you got a little stick concept with the tight ends. That's Darnell Washington. There's Pat Fryermuth. And Najee Harris is swinging out of the backfield. Now, the key to executing this is you've got basically a zone beater to one side, the bottom of the screen, that stick concept's a zone beater. you got a good man beater up top. So how do the Steelers know which coverage it is? How does Rudolph know? So what, what Rudolph's really going to do is he's going to see this single high safety. And that's one indicator. But his eyes are going to go to the slant flat concept, pre-snap where he sees this press right which is which with a single high tells him that that's man coverage and his eyes at the snap will follow the alley defender who you're going to see is going to run out with Hayward which means that Rudolph is going to target the slant and he's going to have a little window here really, really where he wants to throw the football in 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 that little window right there that little square I just drew because that's going to be the window he's got to fit it in as the linebacker works over and the corner sinks with picking George Pickens' route, right? So that little pink window there, that's where Rudolph's got to throw the football once he realizes, hey, this is uh, man coverage, right? And he does it expertly as we roll the play, right? Here comes the snap, Pickens, ball into that little window. Safety takes a bad angle, and George Pickens is off to the races and gone right we'll let George finish here he runs there you're not catching him man once he gets out into the open like that all right let's look at it again real quick right you get you get the recognition now look at that muddle right there one of the things I like about this is the receivers are are in a little bit of a pack here right as they're breaking free there's your window right that little area just in between the hash and the numbers. And here's Rudolph. This is what I like about Rudolph. Look, he's standing in a, in a fairly tight pocket, but the ball's out. That means the ball's out on time, and he's going to be able to hit it right into that window. The safety, if you'll notice, he's already he's already taken a bad angle, right? He needs to be closing to where this throw is going to be. Instead, he's closing to where Pickens is right now. And that's going to cost him, as we'll see, as he overruns the play and allows Pickens to get out of the gate, missing right there, and then here goes George Pickens off to the races, right? So it's a great start for the Steelers. Two plays in, they get an explosive play, they get a lead. But they continue to move the football down the field uh, by sustaining third downs, 
Here's one of those. We mentioned there were seven for 14 in the game on third downs. This is Pittsburgh's second drive. And on this one, you're going to see on third and five from their own 45-yard line, Pittsburgh sustained the drive with a really nice job of Mason Rudolph staying in the pocket. His pocket presence on this play is excellent. Pittsburgh runs kind of a sale concept. You're going to, you're going to see uh, a dig from Allen Robinson, a Y cross there from Deontay Johnson. He's not the Y, but that's, that's the concept here. Uh, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see George Pickens run a, a kind of a deep outcut. Pat Fryermuth is motioning down. He's going to run kind of a speed out. To me, that's sale because you got one low, two middle, and three high with the backside dig, right? So, so however the Steelers are reading this, right? Oftentimes when you read sale, you read high to low, three, two, one, right? But now you got, you have Jalen Warren in the backfield. He's going to protect and then leak out into the opposite flat here. And the thing that's nice about this is as you watch the sale concept develop, there's nothing open. But rather than panic, Mason Rudolph's going to hang in the pocket, all right, and find his check down for a nice gain and a third down conversion. Okay, so here's Fryermuth in motion, ball snapped, nothing really there, and Rudolph just kind of stands in, and he finds Jalen Rudolph or Jalen Warren out into the flat. One more time, we'll stop it here real quick just to get give you an idea of what he's looking at, right? Right there, as his eyes go to the sale side, okay? There's really nothing there. They've got Rudolph, they've got uh, Fryermuth covered in the flat. They've got Pickens uh, on the deep out. And if you look to the middle of the field, right there at the Steelers logo, you can see that Johnson's going to be bracketed. And as the rush closes in, Rudolph sort of calmly gets his eyes to his check down and drops the ball down to Warren, who, uh, as he always done, makes yards after the catch. If we go to this view of it, you see it a little bit better, right? Watch War Watch Rudolph's presence here. He just stays in, hangs in, doesn't bail, right? Doesn't panic. Unfortunately, too often this year, we've seen Kenny Pickett and then Mitch Trubisky as things got hot in the pocket right here. Look at this, right? What have we seen Kenny Pickett do over and over and over again? We've seen him bail from that pocket, maybe run into a sack or work that spin move that oftentimes winds up with him, you know, getting a 10 yard loss. But Rudolph stands in there. Right. And very calmly just delivers the ball to Jalen Warren, picks up a first down, keeps the drive alive. All right. Later in that drive, later in that drive, another great job of recognizing coverage from Mason Rudolph. You're going to see him here on a uh, really nice uh, recognition of cover three. The Steelers are going to run just sort of like a little switch verticals route. They're bringing Jalen Warren here in motion. and He's going to wind up swinging to the opposite flat. And then you just got a little sort of post wheel switch verticals concept going on over here. Now, Rudolph's got to know what the coverage is, okay? It's going to wind up being cover three, which means that the safety, or I'm sorry, the corner is going to bail to a deep outside third, the safety to the deep middle third, and the opposite corner to the opposite deep outside third. And then you're going to get, right, flat defender, hook curl, hook curl, flat defender, right? Pushing out, pushing out. But this flat defender, because of the swing from Jalen Warren, he's going to attack it aggressively, right? He's going to attack it aggressively. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a nice little window right in here between the flat defender who's jumped the swing and the corner who's had to back off with Pickens's post route. And Rudolph will very calmly read the alley defender, know he's got cover three, and dump the ball into that window to Allen Robinson for a really nice, a really nice game, right? Here comes Warren in motion. Rudolph takes a look, kind of a little half fake. And there, boom, ball on time, just in front of the corner before he can get there. Here it is one more time, right? Watch Rudolph. Look where Rudolph's eyes are, right? You can see that Rudolph immediately has his eyes through the play side. He sees how aggressive the the alley players being and attacking Jalen Warren. He sees the corner back and off, right? This is his tell right here, right there. You've got flat defender, deep third defender. And what he understands is this guy's bailing. And as that guy bails, then that obviously is opening up this area right here where we see Allen Robinson working his way in there, okay? So here comes the, here comes the throw again, right? Nice ball on the money away from the corner. 
sustain the drive, and the Steelers would go on to score a second touchdown on that drive. Okay, if we go to the end of the first half, right? At the end of the first half, the Steelers get the football late in the half, under two minutes to play. I honestly thought that they would just kind of run the ball a couple times uh, and, and run the half out there. I had 17-3 to three at, that, at that time. But no, man, they pushed the ball down the field. And here's another third conversion, third down conversion. This is third and long. And this is another great example of Rudolph's pocket presence. As we run this play, okay, this is going to be another big one to George Pickens. Right. The thing that's interesting here is look at Mason Rudolph right now. Mason Rudolph's eyes right now are on this defender right here. Okay. They're on the safety down here at the bottom of your screen. And that safety is, is looking to drive over towards Pat Fryermuth. Right. And, and by doing so, by, do, by working towards Fryermuth, then what, what's happening there is he's taking away Rudolph's primary read, okay? By taking away his primary read, which again is Fryermuth, the tight end on a dig concept, he's forcing now Rudolph to go to a second read. Again, look at Rudolph's eyes staring right down the middle of the field. Once again, what we've seen repeatedly from the Steelers quarterbacks is this. The primary read is gone, and so what's the quarterback do? He runs himself out of here, right? Some kind of some kind of move that that essentially runs himself out of the the route concept but instead watch Rudolph man watch Rudolph with poise instead of bailing up what's he do he steps up into the pocket uncorks a nice deep ball incredible catch there by Pickens let's go back from the beginning watch him climb in the pocket one two three steps climbs into the pocket three steps rather than bail he finds open space that's so refreshing as a Steelers fan to see a quarterback work to open space in the pocket, allow routes to develop, and hit a big play as a result. All right, one more, man. Let's go to let's go to to the the last big one they hit, the 66-yard touchdown to Pickens in the third quarter. This was really big because not that Cincinnati was really climbing back into the game, but the Steelers had started the third quarter with a 3 and out. The Bengals went right down the field and scored, made the two-point conversion. It's a 24 to 8 game. And so Cincinnati now has got a little bit of momentum. The Steelers get the ball back and they answer with another great example of Rudolph being accurate with the football and reading coverage really well. All right, so as we look at the at, at what Cincinnati's doing here, you see a lot of movement, right, from them uh, as they're sort of scrambling around with their with their personnel, right? We, we got a defensive back moving here. We got a potential edge blitz coming here. We've got Press coverage there. We got press coverage there. We got a single high safety. That certainly looks like cover one with some heat coming, right? So the Steelers are running a little snag concept to the top of the screen. That's really a zone beater. In this snag concept, you're going to see a, uh, a little hitch here, right? You're going to see a little hitch here, and then you're going to see a corner route. That's a zone beater, but Rudolph doesn't figure that he's got time to let that stuff develop. Instead, he's going to take his one-on-one -on -one shot to the bottom of the screen to George Pickens. Pickens has been uncoverable throughout this game. The Bengals stubbornly are still playing man. And so great, great, great time to take a shot with heat coming, right? Here comes the blitz. Ball is out. And that is an incredibly accurate throw right on the money to George Pickens. See ya. Touchdown. And essentially game over again. Here it comes, here comes the pressure. Rudolph diagnoses it, gets the ball to his man beater, puts the ball in a perfect position. Touchdown, Steelers. So it was wonderful to watch the Pittsburgh Steelers operate on offense, particularly at the quarterback position where their quarterback, Mason Rudolph, red coverage well, had great pocket presence and was accurate with the football. Rudolph has now earned himself a second start, and we'll see what he can do as he follows up this coming Saturday, or Sunday, I should say, in Seattle in a, another must-win game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, so I'm going to be back with another video breakdown. I'm going, to, I'm going to focus on the Steelers' defense and how they confused Cincinnati quarterback Jake Browning in another video breakdown that should be out tomorrow. So if you get a chance Check that out. Like the video if you got something out of it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. All that good stuff. Thanks again, everybody. Kevin Smith with you. Have a great day.